this slide deck covers output. And when we say output, what we're really referring to is user output, which is the concept of displaying text or outputting data to the user, to the, the actual user of our program, not just the coder. So to do this, we use print. And print is a function that's used to display text in the system standard output window. And we we we'll, are using an IDE, an integrated development environment named PyCharm. And here's a screenshot of PyCharm where we see our files, folders and files. And then in the week1.py, that's where we actually put our code. At the top, you see we have hashtag IDP115 and hashtag week1, which are comments. And then we actually have the code print parentheses, double quotes, hello world. And that is we are calling the print function to print the text, hello world. And it's gonna be displayed down below in our output window. Or when we run it, when we use that green arrow, which is the, like a play button, it actually calls the Python interpreter, which is built into PyCharm and runs the code. And we get displayed, hello world. So this print function is already defined for us in the Python programming languages. And here's some example of code where we said print, double quotes, hello world. And then ones where hello world is surrounded by single quotes, triple double quotes, and then triple single quotes, and then triple double quotes. And the output all looks the same. It all says hello world without the quotes, okay? So the quotes are not displayed in the output because we use the double quotes to define that we are a string that contains the letters that make up hello world. So this print, we are printing strings and that's how text-based data is handled in Python is with strings or we can also call them str objects, S-T-R, because that's the official class, that's the official Thing that's defined in PyCharm to create strings. And strings are text, and they're called strings because they are a string of characters. And when we say characters, that can mean any of the characters that are on your keyboard, including letters, uppercase and lowercase, digits, like one, two, three, four, up through nine, zero that are on your keyboard, as well as all those special characters that are on our keyboards as well, such as the question mark or the exclamation mark, a space. A space is, is really part of a string. It's a character that it can be part of a string as well as like the tab. You hit the tab key and that's also a, a character that represents a character. Strings in Python are written in various ways. They have to be surrounded by quotes. And we can either use single quotes, which is very Pythonic. We can use double quotes, which is what we will be using in this class. Um, and we use double quotes because it's used in lots of other high-level languages. Python is a high-level languages. A lot of other high-level languages use double quotes to define strings. Python just also uses single quotes. And then we can also use triple single quotes or triple double quotes. And those are used for special reasons. So um, we won't necessarily see them in this class, but there are, there are special cases where we could potentially use them. So when we print, when we write print, parentheses, hello world, we are calling this print function and, we're, and the input that we're giving to the function is this string, hello world. And what happens is it, prints it on one line. Now, if we have multiple, notice how each one is on its own line. And here's an example where we say print first line. The first line gets printed and then anything that comes next will be on that next line. So we say print first line, that means print that line and then go to that next line and wait for my next instruction. Our next instruction says print second line. So it prints the second line and then goes to the next line. You'll see here I put print without an, a string, so without any input to this function, but that's okay. What it does is it prints basically a blank line. It says, oh, I'm gonna still go to the next line where then I print my fourth line. If I tried to say something like print fifth line and notice there's no quotes around it, then what we get is an error because the Python interpreter that's built into PyCharm 
goes and says, okay, you want me to print, but what is fifth? If you haven't surrounded it by double quotes. I don't know what that is. If you had a variable named fifth, then it would say, okay, let me try to resolve that. But fifth space line, it doesn't know. There's We have not defined those. And so it doesn't know what that is and you're gonna get an error. So print is a function. In the definition of the function, it's saying here that you can give it lots of different objects to print. And when we refer to objects, again, we referred before to a string object, objects are software objects. So we can print all kinds of different things, including strings, numbers like ints and floats. We could even print a Boolean and, and various other variables and other variable types that we're gonna le learn throughout the semester. Then you're also, that we also have these options of adding sep and end. And we're gonna get to that in a couple more slides. So that's what this print function overall lets us do. And here's an example of printing a variable. I create a variable named greeting. Greeting is the name or the identifier of the variable. We have given it the value good day using double quotes, which means the, Python is going to say, oh, that means you want me, you're giving me a string. The value of it is good day. The type is a string. And then I'm going to print it. And so when we print a variable, what Python says is, oh, I'm going to go get the value of that variable and print that value. And that's exactly what's coming, what's happening here is it's printing good day. Without any quotes, it's printing the value of the variable. The value is that it's a string. And just like we saw with hello world, there's no quotes around it, it just prints that value, which is good day. So I want to do some more examples using variables. We have a month equals January. Month is a variable. Its type is a string because we've given it the string double quotes January. Day equals one. Day is a, is a variable. It's an integer. It holds an integer because we gave it the digit one. Without any decimal point means it's an int, not a float. Now we say print month comma day. So what happens here when we do that, it prints January space and then the digit one. So it gets the value of month, which is January. It prints the value without quotes. And then it prints the value of the of day, which is one. And notice that there's a space in between there. So we have separated this different information that we're giving to print, these different objects to print, the month variable, the day variable, We've separated with them a with a comma. And that comma, that's how we separate different objects or different arguments that we are going to give to when we call the print function. Now, in the second print statement, we're saying the year starts on. So we're telling it to print a string the year starts on, comma. Then we're giving it month, the variable again, comma, day, the variable again. So we're giving it three pieces of information or three arguments. And it print is going to go print that string and then it's going to get the value of month and the value of day and each of them because of those commas the comma after on and the comma between month and day it's going to give us a space in between them that's the default value that's what python decided to do when they developed the language is when you separate items when we call print and we separate items with the comma then we are going to add, we're automatically going to add a space in between them. Here's another example where we say person equals Katherine Johnson, area equals space programs, and we're calling print again with person comma, then we're giving it a string comma, and then another variable. And again, we're going to see that there is a space in between uh, the, the value of person and the string contributed greatly to and the value of area, the variable area. So each object that print is going to print is separate. So when we want it, when we call print, we want to give it lots of different arguments to print. We separate them with a comma. And then the default behavior of print says add a space. When I display it to the user, add a space between each object. Now this is the default behavior. Don't worry, we can change this if we want to. 
So here's an example of where we're changing our SEP. We're going to start with changing our SEP, our separator. That default behavior is a, is a space. Well, what if we don't want a space? So here, again, I'm having two different variables, num1 and num2, and both of them are ints. I say print num1, num2, and it's going to print both of them. Even though I separated them with commas, I, I changed it at the end and I said, hey, SEP equals double quotes, and I actually put nothing in there. It's called the empty string. I gave it the empty string, and now it's going to print it without anything in there. Here's another example. Message equals Happy New Year, which is a string. Year equals 2024. I've put that year just in one variable, one integer. And I'm saying message comma year comma separ, separ, sep equals, which just stands for the separator, equals double quote star or asterisk. So we can put any string we want in that separator. And it doesn't just have to be one character, no characters or one character. It can be many characters as well. So here's an example where I put that star. So it's going to say Happy New Year star and then 2024. And then another example. So that's changing SEP, right? And when we want to change SEP, we put all our, our objects that we're going to give to print. So, and then we give it that final one where we change the set. We can change the end here. Here we're saying print hello, comma, end equals space. So the default is that new line. It says start on the next line. Well, here I said, I don't want an end to, be, to default to the next line. I just want a space such that I say hello. And then my next print statement world actually appears on the same line as hello. I did not change the end for that second print hello print world. So that third call to print in that code here, Python is fun. Python will be printed after on a new line. Okay. So the default for SEP is a space. The default for end is a new line or a return, like a return key. And we can change it. All you have to do is when you call print for when you call print, you give it all the different objects that you want it to print. And then at the end, you can put sep and end. And yes, you can put, you can use both sep and end. You just have to put them after all of the other objects that you want to want to print. Now, how do we display quotes? What if we, in our string that we wanted to display, we wanted to print quotes? And this is difficult because we define strings using quotes. Right In this course, we define the beginning of a string with a double quote and then the end of it with a double quote. So if we actually wanted to include it in the display when, when it displays to the user, how do we do this? Now, you might think, well, I'll just put a double quote in it and it will know what to do. Well, not quite, because here, if we had this code, it says print parentheses, that first double quote, which you see in green here, the first one says start my string, and then the second one says end my string. And then the interpreter is going to get to this word Python with a capital P and say, well, are you a variable? I don't see that you've defined a variable named capital P Python. So I'm just going to crash. And that, that red is supposed to say it's crashing. This will not work. It will generate an error. Okay. So how do we do that? So we can use this by, by doing some special things, right? So if we're using double quotes to delimit, to delimit or say this is how we start and stop our string, then what we can do here is use this backslash double quote. And this backslash, and you'll see that I've changed it to a different color, this orange color, it's special. It's called an escape character. It says that this first green starts the string then this backslash quote says, change the meaning. The backslash basically says, stop, change the meaning for that next character. So the next character, instead of it being the double quote to end the string, it says, no, 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 I'm going to display that string. All of this, as you want to notice, is inside of a string. These escape characters go inside of a string. So now it will display correctly. It's going to display Python D Python with double quotes around it is named after a comedy troupe. Remember, Python is named after Monty Python, the British comedy troupe, or specifically Monty Python's Flying Circus. 
Now, we could also use single quotes to change the, the string, and then we don't have to use these escape characters. Okay, so we could do that where we say, the single quote starts my string. Then I can have it display double quotes, and then I'm gonna end it with my single quote. So you just have to be, you have to do the same thing. If you start it with a single quote, end it with a single quote. If you start it with a double quote, end it with the double quote, okay? So this is how we can do this. Now the problem comes, of course, when if you have you want to display something to the user and it's a combination of single and double quotes. So then you have to really, you really do have to use escape characters. So here's a, an explanation of escape characters. They deviate or escape from the normal meaning, right? We are going to use this backslash. So escape character, one escape character is really made up of two characters, a backslash and another character. So backslash has a special meaning here. And remember, a backslash is different than a forward slash. A forward slash is gonna mean something else to us um, in Python. We're here using a backslash, which is usually on your keyboard, kind of below your delete or right below your delete key or around your delete key. And this, this backslash says, I'm escaping the normal meaning and I'm doing something special. Here's some common ones. So I've already taught you the double quote, the backslash double quote, we'll, we'll do a double quote. There's the backslash single quote, but there's some great ones that we like to use, which is backslash N, which says new line. So, which is like, basically give me that extra line. Like that return key, I wanna add a new line, that's backslash N. There's also backslash T, which is tab. Backslash T means tab over. And then if we actually want to do a backslash, well, now backslash has its own meaning. So we have to do multiple. So if you want one backslash, you need two backslashes. If you want two backslashes, you actually need four backslashes. So here's some examples. I have two variables here, task one and stack, task two. They're both strings. And I'm going to call print. I'm going to say first colon and then that backslash T as you see in orange means tab. So it says, give me a tab. So give me tab over some spaces and then print task one. And then on the next line, the second line, print the word second tab and then print my task two. And what's going to happen is now those task, task one and task two are going to line up. Just like in like a word processor in Word or Google Docs, when you hit a tab and then they can all line up, that's exactly what happens here in Python. And here's an example where I'm using it to surround um, data or they, the display the data with a double quote such that I want to actually quote something. So here I have like a variable for author and then a quote of his. Um, and I want to print the author. So I'm using the variable author. So it prints Mahatma Gandhi. And then I'm using comma. And then a string you see in green is my string said. I've got my backslash uh, double quote to say, I actually want to print a quote. And then that green double quote to end my string, comma. And then quote is my variable. And then starting another string, period then double quote, and then a comma, and sep equals empty string. So I'm actually telling it to print all of this, and I'm changing my sep equals to, to the empty string such that I don't have a space here between my double quote and my M, and I don't want a space between my period and my double quote to end my quote, right? I don't want that, and so I've used my sep equals empty string and I've added my own space here after, you know, before the S and after this comma, which is part of the string. Okay. So strings are objects. So in Python, strings are a special type of variable. They're called an object. When we create these variables, they're really objects. They're built off of this stir class that's already built for us. So when we create, for example, a variable poet, um, that's an object. Um, I have a string object. The variable name is poet. Its value is Amanda Gordon. And any object 
has usually kind of, we can break up its major pieces into two parts. It, it has its data that it's actually holding its value. So in our case, we talk about variables. It's the value that the variable is holding. And then it also has methods, also known as functions. Um, and these are things that can we can do with that special, that, that object. Because it's a string object, there's string methods that we can actually then manipulate or do stuff onto our string. Um, and we, a method is called, just like a function is called, and we call it with using parentheses. And then we also use a dot operator. So you're gonna have some kind of string variable, dot, and then you're gonna have the method name, and then we have to use parentheses after it, okay? So let's do some examples. Um, I have this, again, I'm creating a variable called poet equals Amanda Gordon, so it's a string, right? It's a, it's a string, its type is, is string, or we could say it's a string object. Um, I'm gonna print poet, and it prints exactly what we expect. Now I'm gonna say poet.upper parentheses, print poet.upper. And what upper says is, hey, take that string, and I'm gonna give you back or return, this method is gonna return a new string that contains that string where all the letters are uppercase. So Amanda Gordon is now all uppercase, capital A, capital M, and so on and so on. But poet is not changed. If I print poet again, I want you to see what's printed is Amanda Gordon with the capital A and a capital G. It's not changed because this string returns a new string. This method returns a new string. The original string is not changed. It returns a new string. Now, if I did want it, it to be changed, I could put it back into the variable. So here I'm saying poet equals poet.upper. So take that poet.upper, it's gonna return a new string, put it back into poet, right? So you're like reassigning poet to be this new string. So now poet is changed. So when we print it, it says Amanda Gordon, all, all uppercase. Now I could say title. So title, as you might guess, says, oh, I'm going to title case it, which is um, each new word has a capital letter, right? So I'm gonna title case it. So when I run that, I have a capital A and a G. And again, when I called print poet, it didn't change it, it just stayed it there, but it looks really cool. So here are common string methods. There's lots more that you will learn later on, but here's some common ones that you may wanna start using, which is upper, which is takes a string and returns to you, gives you back that string, but all uppercase. Or you could take a string and lowercase everything. You could do capitalize, which only does the first letter. You could use title, which does, like we said, the first letter of each word. So basically, Anything that's separated by a space, it then says, oh, that's a new word. We're also going to learn to use strip, which says strip out or remove white space. That's tabs and spaces and new lines at the beginning and end of a string. And then there's also this last one, which is fun, which is swap case, which says, give me a new string where each case, the, the case of each letter is switched. So here we have an example, lang equals Python, capital P, then the rest lowercase, I say swap case. And now you're gonna get this word Python with a small p and then the rest of the letters are uppercase. So there's, um, hopefully this helps you with printing strings as well as printing variables.